Okay, dance a little, please. Dance. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you. <laughs> I told you once. Hola, amigos de Enciclovia School. ¿Cómo están? Bienvenidos nuevamente el día de hoy. Vamos a tener una entrevista con nuestra querida amiga Vitalina de Rusia, ¿ok? Así que estén atentos, vamos a hablar en inglés, obviamente, y ustedes tienen que intentar entender todo lo que vamos a practicar, ¿ok? Hi, Vitalina, hello, please. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hola a todos, me llamo Vitalina, soy de Rusia, uh, soy, uh, soy maestra de Rusia, yo enseño ruso por Skype, Um, hablo español un poquito uh, porque, porque me gusta español, por, porque me gusta uh, gente, gente español. Ya, yeah, if la I'm gente. not mistaken, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> okay, good. Well, it was an interesting introduction. <laughs> Almost perfect, you know? Almost perfect. But I'm sure... I was correct. It was understandable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, they will understand. Don't worry. It's, it's, um, it's good. We understood. I understood, so they will understand also. Okay. 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 Let's start with this. Um, this is the second time we do this. You know, you, you we have this problem before. I had this problem before, and I hope this will this time will be so amazing like the first time. Well, let's start with our question. Let's start with our question. Number one, how many dollars do people need to live in Russia? Oh my God, I already forgot. No, so, no, uh, you know. as a, <laughs> so uh, first of all, we have to say that it's going to be different amount of money depending on a uh, uh, place where you live, yeah? Because uh, Russia has uh, Moscow and St. Pete's. It's uh, like there are capitals of Russia and prices there are Uh, much higher than uh, in other cities, uh, especially accommodation. I haven't lived in those uh, cities, in those expensive cities, but if we're talking about just ordinary, uh, as, I has, as I lived in Krasnodar or in Rostov, maybe, you know, um, we need, give me a second, minimum... Yes. If we, if we take into account the previous currency rate, it's about like uh, $550 around. $550. So it, 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 it includes accommodation, food, uh, some basic stuff, maybe uh, to go go out from time to time. Yeah. Can I go to dance it's with this money? A, it's, it's, it's really basic. Yeah, it's really basic. Like uh, $600. Six hundred dollars, yeah. But uh, okay. take into account that we are using the previous um, currency rate because right now I even don't know what currency rate is for dollar, but I can guess it's like it's something like okay. If I use uh, the current currency rate, it's about four hundred dollars for the basic stuff. Four hundred. Mm -hmm. Yes, the last time you told me about. 500 and 600 now for wow in one week yeah, because, because <laughs> you know oh uh, yeah actually <clears throat> actually currency rate uh, is crazy right now uh rubble is falling down and uh, our prices are growing for example some products uh they cost a lot and uh, prices uh went up like uh, they they doubled or even tripled so Prices are crazy right now. We have yeah, a big and in high inflation. Yeah, I, I guess uh, in other countries, people have the same right now. Yeah. Yes, actually here Or too in my country. Mm? My country too, but uh, it seems like in Russia quite, in Russia quite more, right? It's more yeah, and more. Sure, sure, because we have a lot of sanctions right now. And um, yeah, that's why we have crazy prices. We have crazy currency rate. I've never seen such currency rate that I can see right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I hope Russia will will be fine in, soon because there's a person need us, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's forget this question for a while. Yeah. All right, about $400 then. Um, now let's talk about traditions. Can you tell me some traditions from Russia? Some traditions? 
Oh, you remember previous time I asked you about traditions in your country, yeah? And uh, you mentioned something about color of clothing, yeah? And I told you that um, in Russia we consider white color as uh, something that we wear for celebration, uh, something positive, some positive events, and uh, black color uh, we wear when we grieve uh, for... Mm, for like bad events, <laughs> something tra tragic <laughs> events, some tragic events. Yeah, it's, it's about colors. Yeah. Um, about New Year, yeah. Uh, all people around the world uh, have their own customs. Uh, speaking about New Year, we just make a wish. We uh, listen to the clock, like when it's. Uh, uh, make this sound like boom, boom. Also, uh, our tradition every day, every every new year, we listen to speech of our president. It's a kind of tradition. Yes, like before before making a toast, we listen to our president. Then we make a wish, and then we uh, we uh, we make a toast. Yeah, or like we cheer uh, cheer each other. Like. Ooh. Oh, new year. <laughs> and uh, of yeah. course, every year we have um, uh, we have fireworks. Yeah. After right after New Year came, we go outside and watch fireworks. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, do you write your wishes? Do your wishes in one paper and you burn it? Uh, some people do. Some people, but as for me, I don't do this because I I don't uh, like uh, the idea of drinking ash. You know. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, yes, I know, <laughs> I know about that. They, let me tell you that this year one person made me this, made me do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. anyway. As for Russian traditions, I think uh, um, Russian people are really hospitable. If you go to somebody's house, they will feed you. Uh, till you're full and they will give you the best uh, the best of the best what they have um, I don't know what else oh I noticed that a lot of foreigners are surprised especially people from Latin America they are surprised when I tell them we are wearing uh, flip-flops uh, in our houses you know flip-flops like this thing yeah. yes yes yeah. <laughs> like we, we, have, we have different Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have like uh, different uh, uh, footwear that we wear outside of the house, and once we are inside our home, we change our footwear. Yeah. Uh, do you have? Do you have? Or have you know any um, any Latin American or from other country who you invited to your house, and this person decided not to use this this flip flop? Mm. But actually not. I haven't. I haven't invited any foreigners to my house, so that's why. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, good, good, good. And if you want to have, if you want to travel during the next year, do you do something special? For example, here in my country, I don't know if in other countries, but here we run with our baggage uh, in our block in our streets for one one. We make one circle. Uh, do you do something like this? So guys, you do this to uh, to travel, like uh, to to make uh, to <laughs> to make your dreams come true. About uh, well, dreams about year, traveling. Last year I did it for first time, and it worked because I I went to Turkey. <laughs> I wanted to go to Russia. Uh, I I decided uh, to go. To Turkey. No, actually, <laughs> we don't have uh, we don't have such traditions. Uh, right now, I remember traditions that uh, our students have. You know, when there is a period of um, exam exams, tests, they have special, you know, special book where uh, teachers uh, put their scores, their marks, they write their marks like uh, with handwritings. I I don't know if you have it or not. Mm, Just no, like uh, I don't know how to describe. It has it has size uh, something like that. It's a book, and uh, teachers write scores. For example, subject and score. And uh, before this period, period of exams, uh, our students 
go outside on the balcony uh, to the open window and they just cry something like Halava, Pridi. <laughs> <laughs> it means they want they want to get uh, good marks uh, without any like an, uh, without any efforts without uh, learning by heart. I'll try to translate word halava. Okay. Halava it's something that you uh, that you get for free, you know, without any uh, any efforts, without any trying. I don't know. It's translated like swag or three B. Yeah, does it make sense or not? Hmm? Something free, the, that something can happen without the help of anybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. So they are asking, they are asking destiny for uh, good marks by this way, like, hello, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people study, right? But they decide to do this. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> okay. Some people study, but some other people do this, but you just uh, talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, uh, for example, when uh, we go to exam, it's a superstitious. We put, uh, we put, you know, we have coins. Uh, and it's, uh, it has like um, number five. Because, you know, in Russian, uh, good marks, it's a five. I don't oh, know, in your okay. country, I know that uh, in America it's A, B, C, something like that. They they use letters, yeah? yeah. But in Russia um, we use... Oh, yeah. huh? In some countries, letters and other uh, numbers, depends on the country. Yeah, yeah. So we use numbers and five is considered to be excellent, Mark. So we have coins with five and we put this coin under our hill in our in our boots like under our hill and it's considered to be a, a, a like a good fortune like we uh we're gonna get good mark if we put this uh, coin under our uh, hill in our uh, footwear did it work for you before when you were a student Wait, to be honest, I used to be an excellent student. I oh. learned everything by heart, so I didn't need any uh, any kind of things to to have good marks. I didn't I didn't need any uh, superstitious or any I don't know rituals to get good mark. <laughs> okay, good for you, good for you. <laughs> but yeah. well, they now was talking about tradition, and that's great. Thank you. Okay, let, let's go to the next. Which places do people have to visit in Russia? Wow, there are so many because, as you know, Russia is a huge country. And uh, as for me, I once I traveled from one uh, side of the country to another. I used to live nearby China. I don't know if you if you know that we have borders with China or not, but we have. And when I was ten years old, my parents traveled from. Uh, from this side, from Far East to South of Russia. And it took us uh, eight days by train. Oh. So can you imagine eight days by train? That time my parents were uh, in their 30s and uh, I was 10 years old and my sister was two years old and we were, we were traveling by train. So we across all countries and I would say that there are a lot of places, uh, uh, you know, I advise, I recommend to take this train, Trans-Siberian train that goes through the country so you can visit so many places, Siberia, maybe you heard that we have the deepest lake, Baikal, it's a unique place in the world. Um, also, I heard a lot of things about Kamchatka. It's an island uh, which is a nearby, kind of nearby uh, Japan. The nature here is unique and it's really different uh, from that that we have here. Uh, as for south of Russia, of course, Rostov region, Krasnodar area, we have mountains, we have sea. It's really so it's beautiful. It's beautiful and I adore. And of course, it's uh, places like Moscow and Saint Speed. They are uh, they are on the lips of everybody, so everybody knows about that. Of course, it's must to see. 
but everybody knows about that. I, I would prefer to visit some places that locals know, like uh, seaside, maybe Sochi, Rostov, um, Siberia, Far East. So definitely you should travel around the country. <laughs> Okay, let's take the Trans-Siberian uh, train and we will know many places, right? <laughs> this is the final yeah, recommendation. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I, I recommend you Krasnodar, you know, recommend you Krasnodar because it's a nice city and it has a lot of sightseeing and uh, we have really, um, we have modern park. I guess uh, it's unique place and uh, even in Europe it will be considered as a pretty modern and uh, high class place. Uh, it's um, one guy uh, created this place and year by year he makes it bigger and um, more sophisticated. Park, Whoa. Okay. Yeah, it's called Park, Park Krasnodar. Yeah. Park Krasnodar, okay. I have listened about your city before, before meeting you, you know. And um, because there was a Peruvian soccer player in this in this team, you have a team, right, Krasnodar? Yeah, we, we have a super team. Yeah, Krasnodar. It's so famous. I was also very surprised that people know this. Uh, by the way, you know, one of my students from um, Malta, he came to Krasnodar maybe two years ago, and he is a fan of football. He knew our team. And he made a lot of pictures with, uh, you know, with um, with picture of our team, like emblem. And I was surprised, uh -huh. like, oh, we are famous. And he was also uh, very surprised that we have such a place as Park Krasnodar. He told me, wow, it's really clean. It's really nice. It's unusual. We never had such places like you guys have. Even in Europe, he told me, I haven't seen such places as uh, we have here. You are making this place very interesting, you know. <laughs> Just tell me mm -hmm. it's not too hot and I can go. Sorry, what? Just tell me it's not a hot place and I can go happily. Actually, it's hot. Actually, it's hot, you know, even in May, in June, July, uh, the beginning of August. I don't recommend you to go to Krasnodar <laughs> because it's really boiling, you know, especially I live in block of flats, so it's uh, there are a lot of concrete and uh, I survive only under air conditioning. So it's not a good time to visit south of Russia. Def only only, you know, on the seaside for the seaside. This time is perfect. But if you want to go <laughs> to the city, uh no don't do this okay so if i go to Krasnodar, i have to go in january or february for being in calm no oh, i would recommend you i would recommend you october november like october september october yeah it's not mm. too hot at the time yeah it's like a perfect time or in uh at the beginning of may april yeah okay mm -hmm. people Right, please, write down. Tomen mm. nota, chicos. Ya saben, si van a visitar Krasnodar, que sea entre octubre, entre mayo y octubre, ya saben. All right, I am... Yeah, because, because, you know, sorry for interruption, because I even have a friend from Venezuela, and he lives in Krasnodar. And he told me that he hates our weather in summer because it's too hot for him. He literally <laughs> can't survive. <laughs> and he's from the Caribbean, so it's... <laughs> It, it supposedly must be like similar, but well, okay. He told me he told me that it's uh, harder for him to live in these conditions. Mm, it's a pity. Anyway, okay. And, so he, in, and he, he adores our winter. <laughs> I'm sure yes, I'm sure. But I suppose uh, the winter in Krasnodar is not too too complicated or too too cold. Not too cold at all, especially right now. We can see uh, the impact of uh, global warming and they have to admit that weather is changing because, for example, like uh, seven years ago, we used to have <clears throat> we used to have a lot of snow and uh, frost like minus 20 or something like that. But right now, like year by year, we don't have a lot of snow, even we don't have it at all and uh, the minimum temperature is around like minus 
seven minus ten it's a minimum like in february but other time we have uh, temperature um, above this above zero so well uh, yeah, things are changing in the world right mm -hmm. yeah definitely bad bad anyway okay so even so i think you make uh, you made a good um, introduction of krasnodar because i i didn't have I know I knew the city before. I have listened about the city and about the soccer team, but I didn't know about the the hot weather. Um, yeah. But but you told me if I go in May, I can find something nice, right? Yeah, in the beginning of the May. Yeah. In the beginning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just in case, in the beginning. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Let's continue. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the most traditional dishes in your country? Wow, traditional dishes, so uh, there are a lot of them, especially if we're talking about winter time. We have uh, traditional salads that we mostly serve for a new year uh, table. Uh, most of them, you know, most of them consist boiled vegetables, such as carrot, uh, potato, beetroot, uh, boiled eggs, uh, boiled meat, um, green peas. Uh, pickles, salty cucumbers, salty cabbage. Yeah. Usually we mix it and uh, have something like a salad. So uh, all all salads are based on these ingredients. It's but one thing which is interesting. Huh? It's a big portion. It seems like you put everything in one plate. It's like, like this, very big. That I told right now that I told you it's not the mix of all these products. It's just the basic, you know. For example, um, one salad it's called uh, Ruski salad or Olivier. It consists of boiled potatoes, can be boiled eggs. Uh, sorry, can be boiled carrot. Boiled eggs, it's necessary. It's a must have. Also pickles, green peas, uh, boiled meat. We mix it with uh, with mayo, salt, pepper, and we have this this salad. And uh, one salad which is really disgusting for foreigners, it's called селедка под шубой, which is literally literally translated like herring. You know herring, like salty fish. Herring. 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 Sure. Salty fish. Salty sure. fish. Like yes. <laughs> Let it's me check, let me check. I'll find it. All right. It's called Siliotka. 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 Arenke. Does it make sense in Spanish? Arenke. No? Arenke. Is this the name of one fish? Just a salty fish. Give me a second, I'll send you. Okay, Arenke. Uh, arenke for me. Do but you know I the word? No? Just a sec. I'll try another way. Mm -hmm. El arenque. El arenque. Okay, maybe some other person here who is watching knows, but uh, honestly, I don't know too much about uh, food uh, or so, fish. So anyway, anyway, salty fish under the fewer coat. No, salty fish is obvious. We have salty fish. What is a fewer coat? We don't use real fewer coat. Fewer coat is symbolizing layers of boiled vegetables. So we put a layer of salty fish, then we put onion, like white onion, fresh white onion, then we put uh, boiled potato, then mayo, then boiled eggs, then uh, it can be boiled carrot, boiled beetroot, mayo, and then once again, salty fish, potato, <laughs> onion, and that's why it's called like herring or sal salty fish under the fewer coat, like salty fish and then fewer coat. And as for summer, also we have different salads, uh, different pies, we have different soups, like our cuisine is full of food <laughs> and you can gain a lot yeah, of weight just... if you go to russia and try everything 
<laughs> I just realized you you can m prepare very interesting things, you know, for eating. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, Do you yeah. cook? Yeah, I like cooking because I like eating. First of all, I like <laughs> eating. I like food. That's why I have to cook because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just because because it's uh, it's cheaper to cook yourself and. By the way, you know what uh, uh, what you add to your dish. It's more safe. About dish? I'm sorry, one more time, please. No, I mean, I mean, it's more safe. It's more safe to cook on ah, your own, yeah. you know, if uh, in comparison to uh, buying food uh, somewhere or take away food. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so do you cook always in your house where you live? Yeah, I cook always, so um, must have its soup. So we have every time we have to have soup because uh, Russian people uh, for lunch, we have soup, something liquid. I know for some foreigners, it's strange, sounds strange. They are surprised that we are having borscht or different kind of soups every day. But for us, it's normal. It's pretty normal. <laughs> Yeah, the only soup I know is borscht, the only one. Well, maybe other, but uh, borscht I think is the most um, the most known, right, in, in the world. I guess, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and people still don't know what it is, if it's Ukrainian or Russian, but I guess we can't uh, we can't separate these two cultures because uh, we're, we're always uh, together, so we can't say if it's Russian or Ukrainian. Hmm, okay. <laughs> All right, I wanted to make a comment, but better no. Let's go to the next question. Um, ah, yes. Are Russian people tolerant, tolerant with different topics? Mm, yeah, you know, as I told you, we can't divide uh, people uh, into nationalities in this case. I can't say that Russian people tolerant or Indian people intolerant or I don't know Mexican people tolerant and something like this. Every time it depends on the person. I can't say that uh, all Russians tolerant or intolerant. It depends on our I don't know our families, our surroundings. So as for me, I'm pretty tolerant because I work all around the world and I met a lot of people of different I don't know nationalities, different religious, political, political views. So um, I can say like I, my, I'm 100% tolerant. Excellent answer, excellent. You. <laughs> now what happened here is uh, I make you this question. I make this question because um, here we have the perception that uh, Russian people are not tolerant. It's a perception only, maybe because um, because this. Um, maybe, in terms of maybe, what? In terms of what? In terms of what? Intolerance. For example, homosexuality. Hmm. Oh, maybe, maybe because you know. Um, me, I would say that. Russian men are so masculine, if you know what I mean. Mm, I guess so. Because I also, I also, I don't want to say anything wrong, anything that can be offensive. Um, but there is a difference between, for example, European, European man and Russian man. And maybe that's mm -hmm. why in our our man can be intolerant towards homosexuality but you know we also have homosexual homosexual people so and i have friends uh, so nobody nobody beat them nobody i don't know <laughs> nobody is bullying them so everything is fine <laughs> <laughs> we can go uh, without problems. I mean, I am not, I'm normal, <laughs> but uh, it's not a problem if someone listens to this. <laughs> okay. See, just Rus Russian men are so masculine. Yeah, masculine, like a real man. Men as macho, macho men, macho men. <laughs> yeah, <they're> macho. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> what a good conversation. Okay. Um, in, in many countries in here in Latin America, people don't kiss on the cheek. Cheek. Men, woman, yeah. woman, woman. Yeah. Do you do the same? Uh, definitely women do if uh, they are in a good relations, like if they are close, closed. Yeah, they do this. Mm -hmm. uh, men don't do this, definitely. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it can be, but uh, it's always accompanied with this gesture, like uh, handshake, really firm handshake, and even pushing oh. each other to, uh, to the shoulders, something like that. And it can be, but it's not. It's not a kiss. It's just like they touch each other by cheeks. But but it's not always like that. A macho touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Okay. What differences of culture have you found in your students as a teacher? Mm, oh, there are a lot of them. I I remember they were. Uh, um, think about saying sorry. I know European and uh, British people say sorry so often. Uh, I remember I traveled to London and I heard sorry, sorry, sorry in everywhere. Uh, for <laughs> Russians saying sorry in something, it's something like pretty serious. It's apologizing for uh, really, I don't know, from some for something terrible if you can make like I'm for sorry. example I want to do it something like this very deep. yeah when, when you for example when you push something on the street or step on somebody's uh, food you say sorry but not just because of because of your uh, I don't know look or just a move towards somebody no um yeah what else I don't know, give me some clue, maybe we can compare our cultures. Mm, for example, here we think uh, like, <sighs> let me think now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about myself. Okay, what I found, for example, I found a different kind of, no, about accents is not necessary. Um, Ah, okay. For example, here I found that the Colombian people are really, really happy. I don't know how. Even if they have a very bad day, they are happy the mm -hmm. whole time. But some people too. Mm. <laughs> it, here in my country, uh, no, when we have a bad day, well, I don't because I am kind of different, but we What's usually face a little and some people cry, some people, I don't know. It's, it's different. This mm. is one different I I see, I see. Also, we have stereotype about Russians that Russians never smile. And sometimes it seems like that we don't smile without reasons. We don't smile on the street towards people that we don't know. And um, yeah, uh, some people can think that we are gloomy and so we are negative. Um, and I think even sometimes we answer, we reply in this way. If somebody asks us, uh, how are you? We use just word normal, like, like regular. We don't say, I'm fine, I'm great. We would say just, I'm okay, just I'm a normal, like average, you know? <laughs> okay, even, even if even, even if everything is great, we wouldn't use this word just like normal regular <laughs> one person from russia told me that uh, here in this part of the world we say a lot of uh, a lot of time when we meet even by accident uh how are you do you do the same mm -hmm. no nope no mm -hmm. we just say hi and that's it and yeah no. because because you know this question how are you is supposed to be like a private question like if you tell somebody how are you you have to be ready that this person will tell you sometimes about his life, like what is happening in reality, like how uh, how his children study, what problems he has with uh, health, uh, with uh, st something about his job, etc., etc. So sometimes it's really not a good idea to ask person how are you because you can you will hear a lot. <laughs> without intention, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. 
Yeah, it's actually ha something that happened here. I, well, as you can maybe listen, it's a noisy place here and uh, where I live. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes listen in the street, from the street, um, to people that say hello. And they start to talk in front of my house, <laughs> in front of my door. Mm. They don't know how are you. And they start one conversation, they tell about children, about work, about husband, about um, wife, etc. It's amazing how mm -hmm. we are. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You are not like yeah. this. Oh? You are not like this. You're Russian people. Uh, what do you mean? We're not like this. Sometimes we can we can speak. Sometimes if you if somebody asks me how am I, I can tell a lot of things about myself. It depends, of course, on the person. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the best of living in Russia? Best of living in Russia, the place, the best place. Of there. course, I recommend you south, south of Russia because it's warm and so we have a lot of uh, fruits here just uh, growing outside. We have a lot of vegetables and um, the density of people here is higher. So we have good economics here, a lot of places for entertainment. Yeah, I would say European part definitely and south of Russia, yeah. Okay. Simply because I, I, I don't have any place to compare. I have been living only far on far east only and I wouldn't recommend this place for, for living because um, the economic level is pretty low there. We can live without too much problems. Mm -mm. We can live uh, without problems. Yeah, on, on south of Russia, European part. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is a personal question. You can answer or not. I just noticed about something. Well, actually before, but now I want to wonder you. How long time do you need for doing your hair? Just ten minutes. <laughs> How much? Ten minutes. Thirty. Whoa, you okay? But it's nice, it's beautiful. But well, okay. I, I know that women, Russian women, love a lot uh, about um, love look well, right? You you need to, to mm -hmm. take your time for for looking well and etc. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it was my personal question. Okay, second part. We are going to try to be to be fast. Do you like Latin American music? Yes, sure. Because I'm in love with Spanish. I like how it sounds. So from time to time I listen to the music, but I don't know the name of the music. I know they just despacito. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> All right. Here. Something, from, have... something from Jennifer Lopez, you know? Yeah. I so, yes, of course. Mark Anthony, do you know Mark Anthony? Yeah, yeah, but I don't, uh, I don't listen to him so much. Very ah, okay. often. Just Jennifer Lopez. Daddy Yankee. Oh. Daddy Yankee. Sorry. Daddy Yankee. That's another ah, singer. maybe, maybe it's modern singer. Yeah, like uh, reggaeton. Gasolina. I mean, Gasolina. Ah, Gasolina. Da, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Russia actually we love we love listening to reggaeton. I know that it's rude, uh, but you know nobody knows Spanish. We just like rhythm and melody, so we are in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Do you dance? Yep. Yeah, I dance. I like dancing. Unfortunately, right now I don't have time, but I used to take classes of salsa, and my dream is bachata. And uh, yeah. yeah, I like Latin dance, so I would love to take nah. up classes once again. Okay, dance a little, please. Dance? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you! <laughs> I thought you want. <laughs> Good, thank you. It would be amazing. Uh, um, what do you know about Latin America? What do I know about Latin America? Yes. For example, can you tell me five countries? Uh, Chile, Peru, uh, Brazil, Argentina. <laughs> mm, 
Mexico. Mexico, of course, Mexico. Yeah. Конечно, Do you like Mexican so Cuba, Cuba, Colombia, 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 Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. Yeah, the country. Puerto Rico. Excuse me? Oh, Puerto Rico. Does it work? Puerto, Puerto Rico. But yeah. you know, but you know, it's a kind of uh, part of USA, something like that. Yeah, exactly. It's not a country. It's uh, one part of USA, but of course, all the people here speak Spanish. Speak Spanish yeah. and have yeah, I have a friend from Spanish. from this country. Yeah, he yeah. can visit Good. me in Russia. He uh, he came to Krasnodar in October. Everybody is going to Krasnodar now. What? What? So cool! It's so cool, Krasnodar. <laughs> okay. Krasnodar All is right. perfect. It's, it's amazing city. You have to visit it. <laughs> I will try in some, uh, no, in winter or in spring maybe. <laughs> but spring. Not in summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Are many Latin American people living in Russia? Don't say about all Russia. Russia is pretty big. Definitely in Asia part, you hardly can see uh, any foreigners from Europe or Latin America, especially in Moscow and in Saint Pete. There are a lot of foreigners from different countries. Um, in Krasnodar, yeah, you can meet you can meet some people. Even I have a teacher who is from Venezuela, and he teaches me. Uh, Spanish he, and he has been living uh, in Russia almost for years. He speaks Russian almost perfect. Is uh, he's fluently? Yeah, speaks Russian. Russian. Mm. Yeah, but I wouldn't say that there are so many people from Latin America. Yeah, Just in, like, Moscow, in, in Moscow is the Moscow is the city where there are more more different kind of people, right? Most cosmopolitan, maybe. Yeah, I guess like in any capital, uh, Moscow has a lot of foreigners. They have uh, their communities. Yeah. Good, OK. I know that uh, there, are, uh, there are people who studies in Russia, who study in Russia. Um, for example, I have a friend from Ecuador and uh, he moved to Russia and uh, he studies in Russia. Oh, I have another personal question, important for me. Um, you are teaching about four years, five years? Yeah, yeah, I have been teaching for four years, more, more than four, almost five already. Five. Mm -hmm. uh, according to your experience, how long time do you think a student needs to learn Russian? Not completely, but uh, to speak, to, to live. It's nice. Do you know, it's really, it's really different uh, for, for people. Sometimes I meet people who study uh, Russian like for two years and they speak, wow, just like very, very, very good level. They already have very good level. Some people uh, study Russian for nine years and they can't, Creative yeah. phrase. It's a paradox, but I don't know how long you need to achieve uh, your speaking level. Every time it's different, depends on a lot of uh, factors, a lot of conditions. Uh, so it's you know you know it's better even than me, I guess, because you also you are also teacher and you know that each case is very different, different. individual. Yeah. Yes, of course. But I noticed, for example, uh, people who who speak uh, Italian or French can learn Spanish easier than people from Japan or China. This is for sure, we, we for sure. Yeah, yeah. You have very similar languages. Yeah, yeah. I have the same people from Asia. Uh, they are really hard to learn uh, Russian language. Uh, people from for example, I have uh, students from Romania. They speak very fast and very well. They they learn very quickly. Mm, but as for Americans, the cases are pretty different. It depends on motivation, goals, like the reasons why they studied. Yeah. 
Yeah, some people told me before that the best way of learning a language is falling in love. Is it true? Do you think? Oh, I wouldn't say so because it can work uh, vice versa. Like you are falling in love with somebody and this person will will uh, will study your language, you know? Yeah. But uh, you but you will not be able to speak uh, his language. I would say that the best way to learn language is uh, going somewhere, going to the country where people speak this language. I guess it's the best way. Have you known before about any love story from Russian person or or from other country that goes to live that went to live to Russia and in this place this French person started to learn Russian and he or she started to to speak good. Uh, yeah, the example the example that I mentioned about my Spanish teacher, he's from Venezuela, and how he can uh, how he ended up in Russia actually. He uh, got to know a girl from Russia, from Krasnodar. They fell in love. And uh, after a few months of chatting on the Internet, they decided to meet and he came to Russia. And uh, in one month they got married. So they still together and he lives in Russia. He speaks Russian. Yeah, it's a love story. But, you know, um, actually, I have a lot of students who have Russian wife and or Russian girlfriend. This is uh, one of the reason people study Russian. Yes, one of the common reason, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you speak like if um, you have almost only men students. Wife, mm -hmm. girlfriend, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Mostly my, my students, most of them, they're men, yeah. Mm, OK, yeah, I suppose. OK, no more comments about it. <laughs> OK, yeah. uh, which country of this part of the world? <laughs> no, no. Which country of this part of the world would you like to visit? You know, I would love to visit uh, each country. Yeah, because Every I'm country. I'm so curious. I'm so curious about other cultures, about other places. You know, if uh, if I had a lot of money, I would travel all around the world. Yeah, of course, this is a kind of dream of many people, right? Yeah. <laughs> to travel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this is the end. Thank you, Vitalina. Thank you so much for helping me helping me with this, and. Um, I will ask you to say goodbye to our groups, to our to our students, and uh, of course you can speak a little more of Spanish. Gracias por la atención. Nos vemos. Okay, thank you. I will speak some words in Spanish. Okay, okay, chicos, chicas. Muchas gracias por, por estar aquí, por haber visto este video hasta el final, sobre todo. Y si lo han adelantado, ok, it doesn't matter, no importa. Eh, lo importante es que ustedes hayan podido escuchar y conocer un poco más sobre la, la cultura rusa. Y espero que haya sido de su agrado. Muchísimas gracias, nos vemos hasta la próxima. Bye, chau. Ok, Vitalina, bye, thank bye. you so Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for your time. Have a great day and see you soon. Take care. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.